much strength like no other. And it preaches to me. Whoa, you are.
sing, say, ain't no need. Ain't no need to worry. About what the night. What the night is gonna bring. It'll be all over. It'll be all over. In the morning. Say, ain't no need. Ain't no need to worry. About what to soar or to fly, you have to break a law, the law of gravity. And the Wright brothers got that thing all figured out. But every time they was trying to build their plane to go up, the laws of gravity was pulling them right back down. I'm talking to somebody here today, every time that you try to go up, something always pulling you back down. Whenever you try to start that nonprofit organization, you get pulled down by all the paperwork. Whenever you get ready to open that restaurant, you've been pulled down by all the finances and everything that, that go against it. It's something about us and where we come from, it always try to pull us back from where we came. We all came from dirt. And if you come from the hood, the hood will try to pull you right back on down. But these guys, the Wright brothers, they never did let that stop them. Because they realized they had to go to a higher law. They had to break through the law of aerodynamics. And they went into their bicycle shop and they built a plane. I'm going to say that again. They went into their bicycle shop, not the manufacturer, bicycle shop and built this airplane in Dayton, Ohio. And then when they built it, they realized it still wasn't going up because it was getting pulled down by gravity and they decided to put it on a runway. Because they realized if they were going to break the force, they were going to have to go in full speed and keep on going and break the force of gravity and be able to fly in life. That's a lesson for somebody up in here. You see, they didn't let nothing stop them from building this airplane. They could have said, you know what, I'm gonna wait till I get my degree in aerodynamics. We are gonna wait until we get some monties. We are gonna wait till we get this manufacturing plant and get it going. They did not let that stop them and they kept on going and doing their thing. Beloved, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but there's something in your way and I feel like today you're gonna be like the Wright brothers. You are not gonna let that stop you. You're not going to let the forces hold you back. This message today is for that person who don't have all the resources, but you got big dreams and you got little resources. This message today is not for the one who get a small loan for a million dollars from his, from his daddy in 1969. This ain't for you. This message ain't for the person, the entrepreneur, Negro, that them figured it out and doing well. This, this message ain't for you. This message for people with big dreams and little resources. And you're not going to let that stop you today. You got to have all the resources. God got all the resources. You ain't got to know it all. God knows it all. You don't have to have a degree in everything. God have all the degrees that you need. Some of us have more degrees than a thermometer and can't figure nothing out. But don't let what you do not have stop you. Steve Jobs built Apple Computer in the garage. Jeff Bezos built Amazon in the garage. Man, these things were built in a garage. You can even build a pipe bomb. Well, that's not a good idea. <laughs> don't try that. <laughs> but they didn't have it all. And I'm telling you, you don't have it all. And then when they built the airplane in Dayton, Ohio, they had to go all the way to Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, 
because the wind was better over there. And when, when, if they fell down, they had a soft landing. I'm telling you, when you start doing what God tell you to do, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Sometimes you're making two steps forward, and then you're making three steps back. Sometimes you seem like you're up, and then sometimes it seems like you're down. I come to tell you what God has called you to do, there are going to always be some challenges. Yes, there are going to be some setbacks, but you got to push on through. Yes, there are going to be some pain, but learn from it. Yes, there are going to be some fear, but you got to learn how to conquer it. Is there anybody here ready to go get what God has for them? It's hard, but it's possible. It's tough, but you can do it. And I'm telling somebody today that you're going to get through whatever you're going through because the world may be against you. But if God is for you, who can be against you? If God is on your side, you're going to defeat this. If God is greater than your enemies, don't you cry one more day and understand that you're going to get through this. Anybody ever receive the message today? The battle is not yours. It's the Lord. And these folks are facing it today. If you would, rest up on your feet. The Bible says in Joshua 6 and 1, Now Jericho was shut up inside and where? Because of the people of Israel. None went in and none went out. And the Lord said to who? Joshua. See, I have given Jericho into what? With his kings and mighty men of valor. You may be seated. The Israelites are facing this task, and they don't believe that they have the necessary resources to fulfill this task. They didn't have it all together. The Israelites were facing this wall, but we serve a God who break down walls. The Israelite was facing challenges, but we serve a God that will help you overcome your challenges. The Israelites were facing the problem, but we have a God that have a plan for problems. Somebody need to hear that right now. You facing the wall in your life. Don't you know God will knock down that wall? You facing some challenges right now. God will help you overcome those challenges. You got something right now that is in your place, in your way, but God got a plan for you. Last week, we talked about help is on the way. And some people sent me a couple of text messages, thought it was pretty, pretty um, hilarious. But today, it's still talking about help on the way, but in a different way. What I'm saying to you, you always going to have problems, and God will do what God say he will do. But we got to understand that there are going to be some problems. See, the Israelites were having some problems. You know what they was doing? They didn't make it to the promised land with Moses. They, went, they, went, they was in the wilderness for 40 years, right? And all they were doing, round and round we go. Round and round we go. Round and round we go. They just started clapping, you know what I'm saying? They started doing the percolating for 40 years. Never made it. And then at this point, we have a, a general named Joshua to help them get to the promised land. But the reason why they was able to get to the promised land is because they saw the vision that God has for their life. Somebody need to hear that. The only way that you're going to make it, if you see what God sees for your life, you have to see what God sees. And if you don't see what God sees, you're not going to make it. You're not going to get what God has for you. They had this big task, this big wall that they couldn't get around, but God saw something up in them. Don't you know you need to see what God sees up in you sometimes? I have come to a point in my life, I, I don't have faith in me like I used to. But I got faith in God because I'm always facing something too big for me. And that's the mindset we want to come in. Now, look at this, look at this right here. He, 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 Joshua is coming up after Moses. That's some big shoes to fill. Moses done been through all these supernatural blessings and miracles. Moses done done it all. Moses done been there and done that. Mo Moses done, done held up the rod and, and, and it parted the Red Sea. Y'all seen the movie. Mo Moses, he done, uh, um, he done turned some water in, in, into blood. Moses had some, some uh, 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 he dealt with the plagues. He was instrumental in that. Moses did some great things, helped some water come from a rock. He, he did some good things. Moses even helped get some chocolate stains off their T-shirt. Mo Moses did it all. He was a bad man. And Joshua was like, what am I supposed to do with this man undid? 
But I tell you this right here, Moses never made it to the promised land. He had a lot of supernatural blessings, but he never made it to the promised land. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I don't even have to have all the supernatural if it's going to keep me going around in a circle for 40 years. I'd rather have a natural blessing from God if it's going to get me to the destiny that he has for me. Moses did some great things. This man got some big shoes to fill. But when you have to fill big shoes, you got to know you got to be God. The first thing that he said, it says in, in 6 and 2, it says, and the Lord said to who? God. The first thing you need to do in your life is make sure that you are hearing a word from God. Many times in our life, our life is messed up because we listen to everybody else but God. We listen to our friends. We listen to the neighbor. We listen to this book. Before you buy Oprah Book Club, before you read Les Brown book, before you read the 21 ways to be successful, before you read how to get a good man, you need to hear a word from God. We hear everybody else. But God. And he's, he said, look, he said to Moses, you guys going to take on this. And they were like, God, you sure? Look at this now. And then they get to the wall. They're like, I, I see what you're saying, God. I'm going to start this, this business, but I ain't got no money. I, I, I see what you're saying, God. I'm going to get this degree, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to get this master's degree, but, God, I ain't even finished my GED yet. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm facing something so big that I can't figure it out. Who am I talking to out here today? It ain't adding up. And he said, first thing you need to do, you need to see. And that's, it ain't saying with your physical eyes. It's saying you need to see the vision that God has for you. You see, before you became a mechanic, Bo, you visualized that. Monica, before you started your, your T-shirt business, you, you visualized. Uh, 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 Rainy, before you became a teacher, you, you, you visualized. And you got to see down the road and visualize where God is going to take you. You have to see it. And that's the first thing And when you have vision. You see it. It don't make sense, but you got to see it. And the only reason why their condition changed is because they saw what God was doing in their life. And the walls came down only because of a big God and not a big person. Some of y'all in here right now, I don't know who I'm talking to. Don't judge your future by your present condition. Don't you think about your current situation. It is not your future. God is in control, and God is going to take over, and he's going to deliver what he said he's going to do. For those who believe, you're going to be unstoppable. Because he make walls come down. And, and one thing about it, when you see the vision that God has for you, number one, the first thing it does for you, it determines the people around you. It, it determines your company. Once you understand the vision that what God is taking you, because you can't take everybody where God is taking you. In 1 Corinthians 15, 33, it says, Do not be deceived. Bad company Corrupts what? If you be honest with yourself and courageous with yourself, there are some people that has, that there are some people that you can't take on the journey. There are some people who are hindering the vision that God has for your life. And you have to be honest enough to understand that I need to assess my life and see where my life is going. Beloved, if you get the wrong person in your life, they can set you back financially, spiritually, emotionally. And that's why we all got to look at our life, what God is talking to me about. And then I need to do an appraisal of my life. Somebody say appraisal. See, it ain't no opinion. I like this person. They cool and all that. But I'm, I need to do an appraisal. That person in my life, are they helping me get to the vision that God has for me? Or are they hindering the place that God's trying to take me to be? Beloved. You got to do an appraisal. I remember Sam Rayburn called me a few weeks ago. He was over here on Laramie across the street. And he went to a house. He's an appraiser. And he said, this house right here is worth $225. Somebody say $225. $225,000. But he said, the house to the left 
is worth 200,000. Somebody say 200,000. And then he said the house to the right is worth 250. Y'all see where I'm going with this? And he said, so this house right here that we're talking about, we're going rank to rank it in the middle. Yeah. Beloved, whoever is to the left of you and to the right of you has something to do with your value. Right. And if you don't understand that what's to the left and what's to the right, it matters in your life. Yeah. You can be a million-dollar individual and hanging out with a two-dollar-behind person, and I tell you, it's going to bring your value down. I said two dollar person. <laughs> now, if you start laughing, thinking of anything else, that's on you. <laughs> but it'll bring you down. And that same house on Larrabee is over on this side of town. If you take that same house and put it over there by Martin Luther King Avenue, they're gonna say it's worth by eighty thousand yeah. dollars. Beloved, location, location, location. Who around you has a lot to do? Where are you going? Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. There are some places that you just can't go. There are some people you just cannot be hanging around on the regular. There are some things that you just can't do if you want the vision that God has for you. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. I, I want to talk to somebody today. I, I think God is talking to me today. The devil has told you that you don't have what it takes. The devil has told you that you're not going to accomplish it. The devil has told you that you're not even qualified. I come today to rebuke the devil in the name of God. <laughs> With God, you are more than a conqueror. With God, you are more than enough. With God, you're not going to fail, and God is going to help you win. Those who believe are going to be unstoppable today. They're going to be unstoppable. Yeah. The, the devil is a liar and deceiver. He'll tell you what you ain't got. Yeah. Tell folks all the time. They always, some, some, some guy the other day tell me, man, I want to do this and that, but I ain't got the money. I said, man, you ain't got to have the money. It takes money to make money. But you ain't got to have the money. He said, if I, ain't got, I, I don't have the money, I can't make money. No, you ain't got to have the money. You got good credit. You know somebody. You might have to work under somebody doing the same thing you want to do and learn the ropes and build your name. But you don't let money stop you. God is unstoppable. Yeah. Yeah. And what that does, that stop us from doing the thing God calls us to do because we're looking with the natural eye and not the supernatural eye that God's looking with. So understand you leader today that, 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 that you see the vision that God sees for you, not what you see to the physical. And then you understand that when you understand what God is taking you, you understand that it's going to determine the company around you. And not only would it determine the company around you, it would determine the way you spend your monies. Oh, somebody want to hear that. Yeah, yeah. If I'm going somewhere, I need to govern myself accordingly if I'm going to do what God has for me. The good book says right here in Proverbs 21 and 20, a wise man saves for the future, but the foolish man spend whatever he gets. When you save, you are making provision for the future. Big mama says save for a rainy day. Can I help you today, blood? It ain't raining in a while, but it's going to rain. <laughs> if you keep living, it's going to rain. And one thing I learned about storms and rain and all that, especially storms, they come, they don't do no RSVP. They come uninvited. <laughs> they don't let you know when they're coming. They, they come unexpectedly so you can expect them. Expect the unexpected. I, I'm so glad I grew up with humble beginnings. I'm so glad I used to pick cucumbers and didn't have much because I know what broke feels. And since I know what broke feels like, I ain't trying to go back to being broke. I ain't trying to go back. So I don't spend everything that I got. And fellas out there, in order to make it in the way the economy and stuff getting expensive, gas getting more expensive, food getting more expensive, medical costs is getting more expensive. Fellas, you're going to need some cash in order to last. Now, I ain't saying she'll go, Dick. But she don't want no. <laughs> she, 
She take my money <laughs> when I'm in need. <laughs> yeah, she's a trifle. <laughs> no, just that. Play with it. What two broke people gonna do? Argue. <laughs> Argue. You frustrated. You frustrated. You gotta have some cash. But but this is what I've learned. You got to invest. You got to plant some seeds. In the black community, the reason why a lot of us are living paycheck to paycheck, they say seven out of ten people paycheck to paycheck because we just uh, accumulate stuff and we don't invest. See, see, beloved, I've learned this a long time ago. If, who want to make some monties? An old, some old guys brought me into a little group. I told you the people around you will affect you, right? And the people I seen with a lot of Monty's, they wasn't flashy. They had overalls on, they had this, and they didn't, because they worked and built it brick by brick. They didn't sign no NBA contract. They built it brick, brick by brick, and once you get to that level, you ain't got nobody impressed. Once you know that you know. But one thing they learned me, they said, look, Picasso, you buy assets, and then once you buy assets, let the assets pay for your liabilities. I'm going to put it on the bottom shelf. Assets put monties in your pocket. Liabilities take money out your pocket. I'm going to say it again. Let's bag that thing up. Assets put money in your pocket. Liabilities take, so you know buying the car and all that, but it's taking money out of your pocket. But I tell you, Monica, when you buy them T-shirts, and you put some print on them, that puts some money in your pocket. But when you buy them tools and, and, and them parts, and, and, and then you fix somebody's car, it puts some monties in your pocket. I'm telling you, Rainy, when your rental house, when it bring you money, they the end of the month, well, I, put it, I just put in her name. But it, it brings, <laughs> I mean, same thing, same thing, same thing. But assets put money in your pocket, and liabilities take money out your pocket. And you ain't got to be the smartest man in the world. Google what is the difference. It's a gentleman in my neighborhood. Well, I'm told it now. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we'll delete that part out. But every time he see me, I want to invest. I want to invest. Taking me out to eat and all that. That's about fourth time. Like, man, look, I'm tired of ribeyes, man. So this what, this what. But every time he tell you something, I want to invest. And then a few months later, Garrett, I see him on a golf cart. I'm going to walk over here. Six months later, I want to invest, and then I see him on a scooter. I'm going to go back over here. <laughs> a few months later, man, I want to invest, but I don't have the money right now, and I see a ski boat in his yard. Can I help you, beloved? Oh, yeah. Once you get the basic, you get your food, your shelter, and a reliable transportation, now it's time to invest in something that's going to put money back into your pocket. Because when you invest in something and, you, and, and it's going to put money back into your pocket, then you can buy all the toys you want. But it's called delayed gratification. But love, uh, if that golf cart is not driving you to your vision, then leave it where it's at. If that scooter ain't scooting your butt to your dream, right? Leave the scooter where it's at. If that ski boat ain't skiing your behind to where God has you to go, you leave it where it's at. Come on now, beloved. We, we got to do better with what we're doing and understand that we have to do what God tells us to do. And in due season, everything will come on up for us. You see that beautiful waitress? Is she going to take your house? Leave where she at. It's for you to tell. <laughs> Lady. Uh, 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 you may have, uh, he may be, may be Tyrone, Ray Ray, and Pookie, right? But if he look in the mirror, I'm going to say it again, if he's looking in the mirror, more than he's looking for a job, leave him where he's at. You, you, you might have to get Jerome. He, he might not be that eye candy, but his IRA account is on point. He got a job with benefits, and he loves you, and he's going to give you everything that he got. I'm telling you, that's who you go with. Ain't that right, Kaylee? That's what I'm talking about, baby. That's what I'm talking about. But that Jerome going to be an asset to your life. Pretty Ricky, leave him where he's at. He ain't mean, I mean, you no good. But anyway, somebody always come to me, man, how to do this, how to do this, how to make young folks come to me all the time. I, I, old man broke it down. How? 
can I flip some money? How can I do this? I'm going to show what the old man taught me. This is what he said. This is what he said right here. He said, look, you want to know how the secret to turning $40 into $400? Put $40 in your gas tank, then drive to work. <laughs> these young folk want to come in, and they read these books, and they listen to these people, Grant Cardion, take this class for $2,000, and I'm going to make you a CEO by the end of the day. That ain't true. If your daddy can't give you a million dollars of a small loan, so when you're fresh out of high school, you got to do like the rest of us. you got to go up there and work and work your way up and take baby steps, baby, and thank God along the way. Amen. Amen. It ain't going to happen like that. I saw a YouTube clip the other day, and they were talking about how hard it is to make it, like how are we supposed to make it? And they were like, the pay and uh, rent so high and, and, and gas so high and bills so high. How are we supposed to make it? And they were saying something, the White House got to do something. Can I help you, boo-boo? You can wait on the White House if you want to. You better save yourself and buy some assets to pay for your liability. Miss Shirley, my wife, gave me a compliment the other day. She gave me a compliment. So I'm sitting on the couch, and I got a, an email saying that I'm eligible for my Canadian Football League um, CFL retirement. I'm like, okay, boo. Yeah, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. And I told my wife, I thought, okay, I, had, I had really didn't think much about it. Let, let, now, she, she, she said, Picasso, you have made some really good decisions financially. Now, she might want to hold something tomorrow, but just, but just saying. <laughs> I mean, you know how I go. But, but, but I was sitting there thinking, like, wow, can I help you, beloved? Why we need to buy assets? Because you're going to get old one day. If you're lucky, old is the goal. When I was 25 years old, 19, late 90s, when I was playing in the CFL, and they was taking the monties out of my account, Ms. Jackson, I'm like, why y'all, I ain't asked y'all to do this. It's mandatory. Amen. Then they're going to tell me, when you turn 50, you get your retirement. I'm like, man, that's so long from me and so far away. I was just trying to find out which club was hitting that night. <laughs> Had my gold chain, my big earrings on, and... I might open my shirt up in the club, get, you know, I get a little hot, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and if I get one or two many, I take, anyway. So, <laughs> that's where I was. My mind wasn't on that. But can I help you with something, beloved? If you can invest in a RRA, put something back, do it right now, don't wait. Because I was like, that is too far from now. And you'll wake up and you'll be 30. Then you'll wake up and your hairline start backpelling. Then you'll wake up with some aches in your back. And, and beloved, old is the goal. Can I tell you something about youth? Youth is fleeting. Youth runs faster than Harriet Tubman and a runaway slave. You <laughs> I don't know if that's a good example, but they be running, though. <laughs> It'll catch up with you before you know it. But you can be like Deacon Cooper. He got retirement from the military. He worked when he want to at Sanderson Farm. Then he got Social Security. Can I borrow $5? <laughs> But you plant them seeds, they come up for you even know it. Amen. And man, when you do the right thing, it helps you. But you got to put something back. I promise you, 1998, it done passed a long, fast. Yeah. I got a 27-year-old, and I got a kid, in, a junior in college. It passes, man. It passed. So look, you need to do something what God gives you. Okay, the first thing I want to point out to you, that was a parable of the talents. And we all have talents. The first one was that this guy was given by the master five talents, and he invested the five talents, and he came back with how many? Yeah. Then the next gentleman was given two talents. He invested it, and he returned with how many? Four. And then the last gentleman, he was given one talent. He buried it. He hid it, and God was displeased because he didn't use his talent for the kingdom, and God cast him into outer darkness. I don't know who needs to hear this, but we, it's a privilege to be entrusted with a talent and use it for the kingdom of God, and he's going to open the windows. 
that you won't be able to receive. Man, rich dad, poor dad said, man, poor people, right? They buy stuff. And rich people buy stuff that's going to work for them. And you got to ask yourself, how long I want to work? How many of you out here right now, you are reaping a harvest from something you planted years ago that is coming back, and you thank God? Better plant something. And then you get to the point where you don't plant so much stuff, you be having stuff coming from everywhere. Man, you got to plant. You got to plant. And look, the same way that God has blessed people in this church, you serve the same God. And them folks and me and whoever ain't got nothing you ain't got. I got one mouth, you got one mouth. I got two ears, you got two ears. I got two hands, you got two hands. And so you got the same thing. Beloved, remember this. The Lord said that you need to see the vision. See the vision that God has for you. It's going to determine the company you keep. It's also going to determine how you spend your money. And then last but not least, it's going to determine what? Your attitude. Look at the attitude of this right here. I'm going to help you right here. This is the attitude right here now. In Genesis 49 and 27, it says, Benjamin shall what? Raven as a wolf in the morning, and he shall do what? Go out and kill something, right? And at night, he shall divide the what? Man, you go out and kill something in the morning, you can eat at night. What's the problem? They said the farmer, you plant in the spring or starve in the fall. Basically, what he's saying is Benjamin is this raven type of attitude. He's like a wolf. A wolf go out and kill his prey. Don't sit around and say, God, feed me. A wolf, he gave Benjamin everything that he needed. But Benjamin had to go out there and do his thing. And then he could spoil at night. But there's the thing. We don't want to go out and hunt in the morning so we eat at night. We want to be blinging, bling, bling in the morning. And we all upside down. And we wonder why we're in this rat race called life. Because these folks will give you any kind of credit you want to. They don't care nothing about you. They want to get you in bondage. And it's like a hamster, hamster wheel. You never can catch up. But we got to be like Benjamin. Set a foundation first. Then you can eat. And that's the problem. That's the attitude we got to have if we're going to make it. He was like a wolf. He goes out and get it. And you have to go get it. Can I help you? I think we've been fooled and bamboozled in church for so long. We want to pray for this and pray for that. But the Bible says faith without work is dead. I tell people all the time, God ain't never made no chair. God ain't never made no table. God ain't never made no furniture. But what God does, he gave us the tree. And when you see the tree, you got to imagine the chair. You got to imagine the table. And God ain't going to give you nothing. He going to meet you halfway. God going to collaborate with you. But it's something that you got to do. He ain't giving you. He makes the trees. You got to make the table. I want somebody today to understand that. God gave you a tree. You build your table. God gave you clay. You build the pot. God gave you water. You take the bath. God going to give you what you need. But you got to do something with it. You got to use it. He'll throw you in darkness not using your talents for his. But blood, when you start planting stuff and you look up four or five years later, you know, you'll be like, man, I forgot I even had that. Where'd that come from? You open your pants pocket, you see, whoa, where'd that come from? Look at one of your accounts. I forgot that was coming up in there. That's the kind of God we serve. Man, you start planting stuff, you start having everything. You start having some beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, chicken, turkey, you name it. <laughs> it become from everywhere. That's the kind of God that you serve. Wait, I'm, but the problem is, we're praying, God, give me a chair. God, give me a chair. God, give me a table. God, give me another chair. I need a chair. You keep praying, God don't make furniture. God is telling you, I gave you the tree, and you make something out of it. God said, I don't do that. The gift is yours, but you got to go get it, right? Some of you saying right now, why I don't? know how to make furniture. I'm not a mechanic or a carpenter and all that. That's okay. 
But, you know, God will give you a degree, give you a brain to use, and you can pay somebody to build you a table. You can pay somebody to cut your grass. You can pay somebody to cut your hair. You, you can pay for whatever you need, but you got to use what he got. And here's the deal. I can't be looking at Papa Soul Talent. He can rock the microphone. He can he do some great things. He's hilarious. I love to hear, hear Papa Soul. I can do it my way. I can't do it like Dr. Evans. I can't wire no house unless it's going to burn down. I, I, I got to do what, it, what I can do. And I don't look at his talent. See, the difference between the five talent, the two talent, and the one talent. See, the one talent didn't do nothing what God gave them. But the five talent and the two talent, it was the same thing. They both came back a hundredfold. You got to take what you got and use what you got for the kingdom. And God will double it for your life, boo boo. See God's vision for your life. Be like the right brothers. You got to figure it out and trust God. And understand that it's going to determine your company. You need to do an appraisal of your life, not an opinion. Is this better for me in my life or is it dragging me down? And then you understand it's going to determine how you spend your money. Am I just getting stuff or am I buying some assets that going to buy all the stuff I need? What side you want to be on? You want to be poe hidden, robbing, robbing Peter to pay Paul? Or do you want to have a life of abundance and things are sprouting up and you can be a blessing not only to your life, your family, but others? And it's never too late to start. That's what the enemy tries to tell you. And at that point, it's going to determine your attitude. We are like Benjamin. We know we got to go get it. We know it's hard. We know it's tough. But we understand that our current situation is not our future. We understand that our current condition with a God, it'll be better off in our life. We understand that God knocks down insurmountable walls. But those who believe it today are going to be successful. If you receive the message, let's give God some praise. We hope you enjoyed the message today. It is now time for tithes and offering. There are three ways to give. You can use our cash app at the bottom of the screen. You can also text and it's at the bottom of the screen. Or if you would like, we have a drop box here at the church where you can drop off your giving. Now, if something was said today that moved you and you want to give your life to Christ, we would like for you to call us at 601-408-7156. We want to talk to you about your decision today. Thank you for tuning in this morning at South 28. We hope and pray something was said that was enlightening to your life. Throughout the week, you can host a watch party or share this with a friend. Look, we hope and pray to see you back next week. Be blessed, my friend.